Super M. I remember when I found out about Super M. I was very excited, I hope. But now, learning that they were supposed to be the Avengers of K-pop, it's kind of, um, I don't know. I do kind of wish they would come back, though, but I don't really think that would be happening. But we got ourselves an Internet's Nathan video, and it's titled, Super M was the dumbest idea for a K-pop supergroup that almost worked. What happened to Super M? Sometimes, do I, is it is it wrong for me to feel like Super M didn't do what it's supposed to do? So they, actually, no, I think Girls on, I think Girl got the beat. Girls on Top was before that. I don't know. I don't remember. I, I'm, of course, I'm going to get fact checked. So there's that. Check the facts. Go check that. Check the facts. Go check that. All right. Let's go. Let's see what, let's see what happened to Super M. <laughs> Does anyone remember the absolutely crazy one year sensation that was? One year sensation. Jumping and popping, we jumping. I really think, like, concept wise, this is amazing. Because I'm, I'm just like, I'm somebody who likes it's not really super teams, but like the, uh, I just saw the uh, Redeem Team documentary. And I realized that that 2008 USA team was actually insane. Way better than the Dream Team. I'm telling you. That's, yo. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> I'm sure everyone that's hey. a K-pop fan has daydreamed about making their own K-pop supergroup. Hell yeah. From their favorite idols. You know, handpicking them to make best group possible. Hey! Back in a minute, I did too. Uh -uh. Only one K-pop company was just insane enough to actually Tall ass try. building. Not once, but twice. Oh. It would have been a major success that could have inspired more K-pop companies to create their own super groups if Super M, as a concept, wasn't already dead before it was even started. Damn. However, with Lucas just recently announcing his return to the music industry, does this signal the return of the first ever mm. super group in K-pop? Like I always like to say before looking forward. Bro, I actually, oh shit. Lucas did drop something. I forgot that he dropped something. We gotta look back. Nick. Hey. Why does this feel like a horror movie? Oh my. Jumping and popping, we jumping. Back to 2019. 2019. Like I already said, the idea of creating a supergroup from already existing groups is something that everyone has thought of. But what does it take to actually make it happen? SM Entertainment at the time Woo. was busy with NCT 127's comeback with Superhuman wow. and their tour, which I went to. And the only thing I can report is and there was a lot of grinding. Okay, that's all I know. <laughs> hey Min was Nathan. doing his thing with Want, NCT oh. Dream release Boom, Taeyeon had four seasons, and Baekhyun was chilling in Yuan Village. So Damn, 2019 was that shit, huh? Oh my. Oh! It wasn't that busy at SM Entertainment, you know, con con considering. And then one night, similar to a night like this, uh. Ethan Man woke up in a cold sweat from a dream. A dream where he created a supergroup formed out of members from already existing SM groups. Okay. Four from Beckin and Kai uh. from EXO, Taemin from SHINee, <laughs> Taeyong, Pen, Lucas, and Mark from NCT to create Super M. Hey. You know, really missed out on an opportunity to, to do like a Power Rangers theme thing, you know, like... Uh, no, they didn't have to. <laughs> Nathan, Super M is a pretty unique name. It would have been more unique if it missed one letter. Huh? What does it ex Sperm. <laughs> exactly mean? Well, Super stands for Synergy... What's it called? <laughs> well, apparently, super stands for synergy, uh -huh. but the M stands for matrix or master. I had Syn no idea before what? writing this script. Synergy I M master? stand for male. Okay, the easy part was over. Finding the members. Now comes the harp. You thought it was male? So, girls on side would have been super W? Harp. 
how does SM Entertainment <laughs> market Super M? Would they promote them just in Korea or would they go international with it? Turns out, it would be the latter. Wow. As Isu Man teamed up with the American music label Capitol Records. Oh, and God. for some reason, they kept on promoting Super M as the Avengers of K-pop. Why? I, I'm still because of BTS. Honestly, I think they kept on mentioning the Avengers of K-pop because the Avengers movies was popping back then, ah. and also just to make it easier for the average American to understand what Super M was. You can imagine that a lot Very of K-pop fans and non-K-pop fans had mixed feelings about Super M as a concept. K-pop fans, specifically EXO, SHINee, and NCT fans, would see the whole project of Super M hey, taking away from hey. those already existing and successful groups' achievements and the mm. time and effort they could have been putting in to promote the groups that they were already from. And K-pop fans, they- Bro, that little pop and lock was crazy. <laughs> I want to see this again. <laughs> promote the groups that they are Ooh, hey. from. Ooh. And non-K-pop fans, <laughs> they, were, uh, they were just confused in general. <laughs> but things were already in motion. Really? And Super M was set to debut live at Capitol Records headquarters in Los Angeles, California. That's kind of fire. The world was waiting to see and hear exactly what Super M was all about. And what happened? And I want to welcome all the fans in the room, all the fans Ooh. watching on the live stream around the globe. Welcome to the legendary Capitol Studios here at Capitol Records in Los Angeles, California. Bro, I would be so excited for this. Like, this seems like, so, as a concept, I would be so excited. Like, oh my gosh, these people from these groups that I like are coming together and just avenging shit? As a concept, I would be excited. You know what I'm saying? Like it would be like a nice, a nice uh, not school project, but like a nice little pro, a nice project just to get some XP. You know, like one of them XP thing. You know, them side missions, some side quests, or the side quests I'd be saying I'd be going on. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like we're here to celebrate the release of their debut EP, the first mini album, Super M. <laughs> Yay! Uh huh. Uh -huh. Jumping, uh, uh, jumping, jumping, we popping, we dropping. Oh, they look so happy. Woo! You know how crazy of a time this was? I don't know. Like, looking back on it now, why back then I was like, oh yeah, this seems normal. <laughs> Not only did they do a whole press. I mean, it seems normal, but it kind of seems very Truman Show-ish. I'm going to be honest. I don't know. Something about, like, I don't know. This feels insane. Like, you know, like, when you have, like, mods and sims and you can do whatever you want? Like, I feel like this is, like, a mod in real life. Because, like, I don't know. Just them sitting down like this with these reporters, like, this is a post-game press conference, looks kind of hilarious. But it's not a fan meet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. <laughs> conference like they were taking their talents to south beach but they also had a watch party of the debut music video at capitol records and had the debut showcase there too that's fire in I'm one gonna... night and on top of that let's talk about that music video and song we jump in damn damn as kai explained it Woo. jumping and yes. puppy and puppy okay okay is that tayman that is Tabor. That did that. Thank you very much, Kai. The MV <laughs> was the cherry on top of this massive money cake SM threw at Super M's money cake. debut. They took the boys to Dubai, rented helicopters, tanks, motorcycles, and sports cars like I don't remember no damn tank. Aston Martins and McLaren. But I'm not gonna lie, the whole debut was iconic. Ooh. Okay. Okay. You can't tell me otherwise. I mean, the music video and I the like song. It. Gave us iconic moments and lines like this. Like a statement for the statement we to fly. Yes. Nah, cuz hold on, that's your heart. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's crazy. And oh, wow, that's so hard. As Tim Entertainment's attempt at making moves in America. As BTS was breaking out there with we songs go. like DNA and Boy With Love, and at a similar time, Blackpink was making their presence known in Woo! the US with their first appearance at Coachella, 
and promoting the hit Kill This Love. Mm. So actually, oh, the wow. timing was just perfect for Super M to catch this new K-pop wave that was crashing into the American scene. Why does it feel like they be like, oh, they having FOMO like a motherfucker? <laughs> Get some in and out, guys. Wow. Giddy, 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 giddy. Oh, I still have it. Hey, in and out. I want some in and out. Damn, what happened to Shiny, the princess of K-pop at the After top? After official debut, they went on the whole press tour in America, going on talk shows and performing. And even Jump going on tour in, in America in 10 cities just months after debuting. They made their debut such a big deal, you couldn't ignore it. But as much as that cash money SM Entertainment invested hey, into Super M, cash money. was it all considered successful? Was their songs probably not? Good? I mean, they were good. They I like it. I like the songs. Personally, I loved it. Yeah, you could say you songs can't good. just make good music from putting these guys together, or you could say the opposite and say that you absolutely are going to make good music when you put these guys together. Just let Peck Tung do his high notes. Yeah. Lucas Mark and Taeyeon flow. Ten Kai and Taemin move like graceful swans on the water. Yep. At the same time, what I do have to praise is the producers for this debut album. European bass producers shout out the London boys, LDN Noise, Moonshine, American bass producers, John Santana, and in-house producer at SM Entertainment, Kenzie. Each track mm. Mini has said reminded them of that classic SM sound, and each track is kind of an extension of Shiny, XO, and mm. And that's not just because they have members from those groups. I like that, bro. Shout out to the producers. Always shout out the producers, bro. In this one. All this proves is that, yes, SM did throw tons of money at this thing to happen, but it all worked. Kind of. Kind Super of. M hit number one on the hey. Billboard 200, World Album Chart, and World Digital Song Sales with Joppin. But because I said Super M was SM Entertainment's attempt to go global, specifically in America, uh, the Korean fans, Korean K-pop fans, mm, were kind of left out. Uh. The Korean chart performance for Super M was non-existent as I Ooh. couldn't really find any stats to put into this video. So that just shows you that Super M was created for the world. Hey bro, I'm not even gonna lie. When I be hearing some of these stories or watching these videos, I know one thing. Korean fans will lock in if they like something or not. They will show you if they're down with whatever is going on. Because, like, the way it, it, it comes out in these videos is, like, Korean fans were not fucking with it. <laughs> And then the numbers or like the whatever will show. And it's like, okay, you can't say some of them like it. Some of them didn't. No, it's just the way it's being framed. It's like the Koreans fans were not fucking with this. Okay. The netizens weren't fucking with this at all. I, kinda, I like that. That's, that's fire as hell. Not necessarily just Korea. In 2020, after a strong showing in the States, Super oh M was God, taking the show to Latin America and Europe. Ooh. They were on their way to return to Asia with a show at the Tokyo Dome, scheduled for April. However, that wouldn't mm. happen, mm -hmm. as the world was shutting down to avoid the unknown of the pandemic. Yeah. So that almost completely slowed down and shut down Super M and K-pop altogether. Mm. But just when you thought it was done for Super M... They came up with something else. SM Entertainment worked fast and slick on developing and investing even more money on a whole new company. I Jesus. imagine all just for Super M. Since no one was allowed to gather for concerts or even fan meetings anymore, SM Entertainment, with the help of Naver, formed Beyond Live, oh. a company whose role is to develop and host virtual concerts for K pop artists to be broadcasted live across the world. They use technologies like AR or augmented reality to program visuals like this. You gotta be a smart cookie to do something like this, bro. Like, like real, like I know sometimes I'll be like nervous about like AI and stuff like that, but these people be some smart cookies. Real smart chocolate chip cookies, because this is nuts. Like, who would think of some shit? Any way to get a dollar, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> One thing I'm going to do is make that money. Here. That is quite the set behind you. Wow. This set you is terrible. The exact same set that we use. I do not like that set. Why is there a lot going on here? There's a lot going on here. Oh my goodness. You are witnessing the exact same set that we- I think it's the it's the 100 thing that's throwing me the fuck off. Or, my bad, one infinity. My fault. 
are witnessing the exact same set that we use for our Beyond, Beyond Live concert in April. Um, as you can see, we even use some AR and a lot of technology right now, so it's pretty advanced. I don't Zimran, like that set at all. not surprisingly, was the first artist to use Beyond Live to hold a concert and sold 75,000 tickets hmm. and streamed to 109 countries. Okay. And made over $2 million. Okay, if you that's think it. about it, this technology is not simple. And I don't know how much it cost to develop this and make it happen. I don't know if they really made that much profit. But they must have because other artists would use this as mm. built platform to hold their own version. I mean, they could. Or they'd be like, oh, wait. Okay, so we did this. Why not just divide up all the money and shit that we used and just do it for all of our crew. Well, concerts like JYP with Twice. And SM would use Beyond Live again for their own SM artist concert series. Hey. Oh, yeah. And the graphics... They definitely improved since then. Oh, okay, that, cool, honestly, cool. <laughs> impressive innovation to keep Super M and K-pop going through the pandemic. Super M would mark their first comeback in the fall. Bam. But they topped that unforgettable debut with this new album. God. Oh my goodness. The first drop was the pre-release single 100, Woo! which kept up the energy from Jobin, but it wasn't as memorable except for Taemin going all yeehaw. Uh, then they dropped Tiger Inside, the uh -oh. title from the new album. Ooh! Damn! Damn, i flashbacks when I heard this, but I'm... It was their first song by Super M to enter the Korean music chart. So finally, hey. Korea was opening up to the idea of Super M as a group. Now, while the title track and the songs that they decided to promote Bang. were kind of... Eh, oh. The B-sides were the highlight. Tracks like Wish You Were Here, Big Chance, Better Days, and Together at Home were upbeat and good-feeling songs that really symbolized the time it was when everyone was quarantined at home. Then you hey, have tracks like Drip, drip. Dangerous Woman that gives off this hot and seductive vibe. Ooh, I feel like seductive. they made Dangerous Woman just for me. Can I say that? You can. With the Super One <laughs> album out and doing well, not only did they start getting the attention of Korea, but they went double platinum and so double Damn, their nigga. debut album, selling over half a million copies. And then Super M would go out and do a bunch of like side missions. Uh -huh. They would live up to their nickname as the Avengers of K-pop. Oh my god, a side mission of a side mission. As they released the collaboration with Marvel Studios on what? this amazing Super M merch. Are you serious? Cool, right? And then Wait, are you fucking serious? And for some reason appear on a Nickelodeon show. What? This is my favorite shirt. It's they were just a shirt. Just a shirt. Hey, 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 hey. And ultimately, who would have thought Super M's last song would be a sponsor? Luckily, uh it was a good one, at least. Oh, this was a sponsor? Hey, hey. We Do was a promotional song made in collaboration with, oh, exciting, an insurance company. And that was really it for Super M. An insurance company? Okay. I mean, you need insurance. Okay. It's been three years since We Do, and Super M hasn't promoted anything. Damn. Not even a sponsor. Damn. Kind of like me. Why did it all stop suddenly? Well, there's actually three reasons. What one, and I think the most important one, as people forget to mention, is the guy responsible for Super M in the first place. Lee Soo Man. It's Super always M was him. strictly his brainchild, his project. It's he always Lee Soo Man. And he did. This whole supergroup fiasco shows a greater picture as to how Isu Men shaped and created an innovative culture at SM Entertainment. And that mm. shows more now that he left the company. The story of Isu Men leaving SM Entertainment is kind of a crazy, wacky, messy, and with a lot of tea kind of story that I'll save for another video. Okay. But continuing on without Isu Men at SM Entertainment. The company lost that experimental spirit. Uh, and Super M wasn't a priority for the company anymore. Damn. Still, they did tease in March 2023. Nigga, it's 2024. That Super M will be coming back in 2023. And well, I don't know if you realize this. Nigga just lied. Uh, it's 2024. Nigga just the lied. Nigga just lied. <laughs> Super M isn't a thing anymore is because the members had to go and do their mandatory military service. Nice cut, bro. Now, that isn't that big of a deal, but it does tend to mess up scheduling and planning for Super M related content oh because they still have Woo! their original groups that they want to promote. And then to add Super M on top of that, it's a bit much. Hey. And the final reason uh -oh. is Lucas. 
Lucas uh, left NCT and Wavy back in May of 2023. And to make a long story short, maybe for another video is due to Lucas's personal past relationships mm. getting brought out into the open. And it mm. became a pretty large talking point very quickly and ultimately led him to step away from all activities and his groups, NCT, yeah. Wavy, Super M, and the company, SM Entertainment. It's been two years since that, but now, just He's days back. ago, Lucas released a multi-part documentary where he is in Korea and his home of Hong Kong reflecting on the events and his attitude now. Which is honestly a very good watch. I recommend you check it out. There's okay. like two episodes out right now, maybe three at this point. And on top of that, he created new socials to announce his return to the industry. But he's not doing it alone. Lucas is returning as a solo artist under SM Entertainment. Okay, which does okay. make it seem he will still promote in Korea and in K-pop. So could we see Lucas return to the lineup of Super M? Possibly. That could possibly be the key to make Super oh, M happen shit. again. At least. Oh, what? I didn't see. What? Oh, I didn't see that. I haven't seen. <gasps> oh, my. Why he do that? Oh, my For God. like one song a year or something like that. But with Isu Man out of the oh. picture to push promotions for Super M, I don't think we will see the first ever K-pop supergroup. Damn, bro. Um, ever again. Damn. Actually, hold up. What? Super M wasn't the last supergroup. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We got hope the ladies. As some entertainment Woo. tried it one more time, and with idols from their Girl groups, Girls' Generation, Red Velvet, Espa, and hey, solo artists. Hey, what? But I'll leave that for next week's Let's go. video. Let's That's go. That's it, Korea Boost. Thank you all so much for watching. Hit that like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss a new What Happened video. And yeah. Next week's where I talk about Girls on Top. Let's go. The beat. This girl's this Why didn't they come out with a better name? Also, let me know <laughs> down below what other K-pop artists or groups you want. I'm to telling you, bro. It should have been Super W cover next in the what happens i'm series. kidding but again thank y'all curry boost so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one peace all right cuz <laughs> hey bro i'm not even gonna lie this was a good this was good and informative i like how good and informative this was i'd still i don't know damn i didn't know tame and left that's nuts what is he about to do i'm gonna have to check that out but damn, brother. Huh. Hmm. Damn. Do y'all miss Super M? Let me know. Like, how do y'all feel about Super M? I don't really remember how all you guys felt about the group. But like, let's let's learn. Let's learn now. I really liked it. Like, concept wise, that shit was hard. Joppa was hard. Tiger Inside was hard. We do was hard. But like, it felt like, you know, sometimes in life, I feel like there is like moments that are supposed to be just moments and when they're gone they're gone that's like a bit of you know some beauty to to the little thing thing you feel me if you don't feel me it's fine i don't even feel myself sometimes <laughs>